Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to speak about immunoassay and sp assays and specifically about ELISA, the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Now, when I say immunoassays, there are two types of them. There are the labeled and unlabeled immu immunoassays. I'm not going to speak about unlabeled immunoassays because they are, they are not they are not used anymore. Some people still are still using them, but not like before, because now there are the labeled immunoassay, which are assays which are much more used nowadays. And we have two very known types of labeled immunoassays, the ELISA and the RIA, the radio immunoassay, and the in, uh, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Now, in this video, I'm going to speak specifically about ELISA, and in the next video, I'm going to mention the RIA. However, if you are interested in one of in knowing more about one of these unlabeled immunoassays, uh, either the single uh, diffusion or double uh, stranded, you can write me in the comments, and then um, uh, I will do an, I can do another video speaking about one of these techniques if you are interested in. Now let's start speaking about immunoassays in general. When I say immunoassay, you should, something should come directly to your mind, which is antibody antigen. Um, antibody and uh, immunoassays depend mainly on um, the interaction between an antibody and an antigen, which we call then the immunocomplex. I can use this interaction in order to uh, qualify or in order to detect a particular protein in my sample or to quantify this protein in my sample. When I say antibody, an antibody is a protein uh, which is composed of four chains of uh, amino acids. So first we have the heavy chains, the inside ones, and the light chains, and each chain is composed of a constant region, the blue one, and the variable region. This variable region contains the binding site which, uh, which is used to bind to the antigen. So it's the antigen binding site. An antigen is a protein, is any protein that has a binding site, a specific binding site on its membrane, uh, on its, sorry, on its uh, surface. Uh, you know that a protein is a chain of amino acid, and then this chain of amino acid can form a um, secondary and a tertiary, tertiary structure. Um, and then in this tertiary structure, the protein uh, form specific binding sites on its surface, which are used uh, to bind this protein, which we call an antigen. Now let's see. Um, so this is this is the antibody. An antibody has a specific binding site to a specific protein, uh, which we call the key lock mechanism. Why we call it key lock? Because it's like like a key and a lock. So this key can bind only to this lock, and then this is why the immunoassays are very. Um, specific and very sensitive assays, so we can use them to detect a particular protein in a protein mixture or in a protein extract, depending on this key lock uh, uh, mechanism. Now let's speak about ELISA. Uh, ELISA is a solid phase enzyme immunoassay. So it's performed on a solid phase, um, and it's an enzyme immunoassay. It depends mainly on enzymes. We will see exactly how. Um, we use it to detect a specific protein, which is an antigen, and it can also be an antibody. We can also detect an antibody using uh, the ELISA. Um, as I said before, we use it to detect this protein and to quantify this protein in a protein mixture. Um, in order to apply ELISA, we usually use this 96 wells uh, plate, the polystyrene microtiter plate. And we should pay attention when we chew the plate for ELISA, the plate should have um, <coughs> this straight bottom and not this concave ones. Um, this is what we use for ELISA. You should pay attention. Um, when you chew the, the, the plate for ELISA. Now let's speak more in details. First, I will say generally, what is ELISA as a general view? When I 
this is the well okay this is the well of the of the plate the 96 um, wells plate but this is a zoomed in well and this is the protein extract saying that i have a protein extract extracted from a from a from a human cell okay this extract is going to contain many proteins like hundreds or thousands of proteins now what i want is to detect a particular protein in this mixture in order to uh, detect this protein first of all i should design an antibody a specific antibody for this protein then I should immobilize this protein on the surface of the well. So I, uh, when I apply the, the, the uh, protein extract, the, the protein is going to be immobilized on the surface of the well. And then this specific antibody, which I design, uh, is going to be attached to, attached to this protein, the particular protein. The, why it's called the enzyme linked? Because this antibody is enzyme conjugated or enzyme linked and then this enzyme uh, can be detected by treating a particular substrate so when i apply this substrate to the well the enzyme is going to treat the substrate giving me a particular signal this is a general view about ELISA so I first need to have my protein the protein of my interest a specific antibody to this protein an enzyme so the antibody should be enzyme conjugated and then the substrate which is treated by this uh, enzyme of course the higher the concentration of the protein in my uh, sample the higher the signal I will get out of this so it's a color colorimetric assay it will give me at the end a signal that is gonna be uh, detected by spectrophotometer we got we're gonna see this at the end of the video now this is a general view now let's speak more into details when i how to perform it how to perform elisa as i told you before when i say elisa i directly think about antigen antibody this is the plate used to perform ELISA, and this is my protein extract extracted from a particular cell. When I want to perform ELISA, I have several uh, types of ELISA. I should uh, uh, choose one of them. I have simple ELISA, the sandwich model ELISA, and then I have uh, the direct and indirect ELISA. Let's speak about each one of these in details and then you will find yourself uh, able to understand, to fully understand uh, the technique of ELISA. So let's start speaking about simple direct ELISA. So it's simple ELISA and direct, simple direct ELISA. You, you will see what, what, what do I mean by this. As I told you before, this is the well. This is a zoomed in uh, well. Uh, from the plate, from the ELISA plate. First of all, in order to detect my protein, I should apply the buffered protein sample in the well. When I say buffered protein sample, that it's because when I extract the proteins from uh, from the cell, the proteins will be in a buffer. Normally, it's the PBS or another buffer, but the most used buffer to extract proteins are the P is the PBS. So, first of all, I apply the uh, protein sample in the well. Of course, the protein sample con doesn't contain only my protein, but it contains hundreds or thousands of proteins. So, all these proteins are going to be attached to the surface of the well. Um, as we said before, in order to detect the protein of my interest, I should have a specific antibody for this protein. But I cannot apply the antibody directly because otherwise the pro the, this antibody may bind to the, to the bottom of the well and then it can give me a full signal. So before applying the antibody, what I do is something called surface blocking. And to block the surface, I use a non-reacting protein. Usually we use BSA or casein proteins just to block the surface of the well. In this, uh, when, I, uh, when I block the surface, then I don't have any space, any more space 
for any more proteins to be uh, attached to to the surface of the of the web in this moment i apply the antibody which is the specific primary antibody um, this antibody is going to uh, detect the specific binding site in my protein of interest and it's going to bind to it so as you see here this protein this antibody can bind specifically to this binding site on the protein of my interest in simple direct ELISA um, the primary antibody is specific to the, which is specific to the protein of my interest is enzyme conjugated what i do next is that i wash out so all the all the antibodies which are not bound will be washed out using buffer or anything yeah usually we use buffer to wash out and then i will have the primary antibodies the specific primary antibodies attached to my protein of interest and conjugated with a specific uh, enzyme what i do next is to apply the substrate and this substrate is going to be treated by this enzyme to give me the particular signal which is going then to be detected as i told you before by spectrophotometer now this is simple elisa and what we call direct elisa now we're gonna we're gonna see the difference between simple direct and indirect ELISA so here I'm gonna tell you what's the difference between the direct and indirect ELISA in indirect ELISA the beginning of the process is the same so I apply the buffered protein sample the proteins in my extract is going to be attached to the membrane and then I block the surface of the membrane using an unreacting protein as, I, as we saw before and then I apply the specific the primary antibody which is specific uh, antibody to uh, the protein of my interest the primary antibody is going to bind specifically to the protein of my interest now there is something I want to speak about here is that how we prepare or we design the primary antibody of course we can buy the primary antibody the specific primary antibody from special companies there are companies who design primary antibodies we can buy the primary antibodies from them but how do they prepare a primary antibody? Primary antibody is prepared by injecting the protein of my interest in a certain an animal, like in a mouse, for example, or in a monkey or in a rat, doesn't matter. And then we extract the species and then we let the mouse produce the immune system of the mouse to produce the primary antibody specific for this human protein and then we extract this primary antibody from the animal so what we have here is that we have um, a human uh, protein bound to a, a primary uh, like mouse antibody let's say then we wash out these uh, unbound antibodies washing out and then we apply something called the secondary antibody the secondary antibody is enzyme conjugated so the secondary antibody is going to detect the primary antibody um, and it's going to bind to it and then i apply the substrate then i wash out just uh, we, we always wash out between the steps and then <clears throat> i apply the substrate which is going to be treated by the enzyme and give me the signal now the question is why did the uh, secondary antibody uh, detect the primary antibody is that because the secondary antibody is a species specific so as i told you before we have here human proteins and then we have this mouse protein the secondary antibody can be um, anti-mouse like can be an antibody that can detect any mouse protein and in this well we don't have any mouse protein but the antibodies the primary antibodies and so the secondary antibody is going to detect the primary antibody now you may ask yourself why did i add this extra step we i could have just conjugate the, the enzyme with the primary antibody and detect it directly. Why did I add this extra step in the indirect 
Eliza. And the question, there are two reasons why would I uh, use indirect Eliza. First of all, this is much cheaper than direct Eliza. Why? Because the, to, de to design a primary antibody is very expensive. Why? Because this, is, this primary antibody is very specific to only one protein. So this primary antibody can detect only one protein. And it's expensive to produce. So imagine if I want to, to conjugate every primary antibody with uh, an enzyme. This is going to be very, very expensive. While this secondary antibody is a species specific, so this secondary antibody can detect any protein coming out of a particular uh, animal. So this indirect uh, indirect ELISA is much much cheaper than direct ELISA, and second reason why why would I use indirect ELISA is because primary antibody can bind several secondary antibody like this so this is one primary antibody it can det it can bind uh, several secondary antibody and then the signal coming out of the when i have like low concentration of the protein um the signal coming out of this is going to be higher and then this indirect elisa is more sensitive than direct elisa now let's compare this is indirect elisa and this is direct ELISA, as we saw before. Uh, primary specific antibody conjugated with a pro uh, conjugated with an enzyme, which is going to give me this signal. And this is the indirect ELISA with a, with one extra step. Now everything we saw here is the simple ELISA. In simple ELISA, we have the proteins, we have the antibodies, and then either primary or secondary conjugate, enzyme conjugated antibodies. There is another type of ELISA called the sandwich model ELISA, as we saw. So here I told you we have this simple ELISA and the sandwich model ELISA. Definitely you've heard about this sandwich model ELISA because it's very well known nowadays. Uh, it's a very good technique that is used nowadays. So let's see how or what is sandwich model ELISA. In sandwich model ELISA, we don't apply our sample directly in the well, but first we apply something called the capture antibody. This capture antibody um, is going to specifically capture our protein of interest. So what we do then is to we block the surface as we saw before, and then we apply our sample. So when we apply our sample, the buffered protein sample, only our protein of interest is going to be bound to this capture protein, and the others, the other antibodies are not going to be attached to this. Uh, to this uh, capture antibody because this capture antibody is specific for the protein of our interest. So uh, when we wash out, then we will have only the protein of our interest uh, bound or attached to the surface or to the capture antibody. What we do then is to apply a detective anti a detection antibody, we call it, and this detection antibody is going to be bound to the uh, protein of our interest. And then what we do is to detect this antibody. So this un uh, the detection antibody is going to be detected either directly, as we saw before. So either this detection antibody can be um, um, enzyme coupled. And then we apply the substrate, which is going to give us the uh, signal, or we can apply a secondary anti sorry a secondary antibody the indirect way. We can apply the secondary antibody, which is uh, enzyme uh, conjugated, and which is going to give us the um, the signal. As you can imagine here, the signal coming out, the, out of the sandwich model ELISA is much, much higher than the signal coming out of the simple ELISA. Because here we only have our protein of interest 
attached. And we don't have any other protein attached attached in the in the in the well so the signal coming out of this is much higher and so the sandwich model ELISA is much sensitive much more sensitive than the simple ELISA especially if we use this indirect detection so the signal coming uh, as I told you the secondary antibody multiple secondary antibody can bind to one primary antibody and then we can get a very high signal uh, even if we have a uh, very low concentration of protein in our sample. This is simple and sandwich model ELISA. Now there is another type of ELISA uh, called the competitive ELISA. I'm going to tell you what is competitive ELISA just in case you heard you you heard about yeah, you hear about it that you know what is competitive ELISA. Competitive ELISA is a completely different type of ELISA. In competitive ELISA, what we have is we have our protein sample. We mix our protein sample with the specific antibody, with an excess amount of specific antibody. We mix them together in one tube. And then what's going to happen is that the antibody is going to detect the antigen, which is the protein of our interest, and it's going to form this immunocomplex, the antigen-antibody complex. And we will also have some excess uh, amount of antibody swimming in our mixture. What we do now is that we apply this mixture containing the antibody-antigen complex and the free antibodies to uh, uh, we, we apply it to an antigen coated well. So this well is an antigen coated well. Coated well. We can uh, bring this well and um, um, and apply first this antigen. So it's an antigen coated well, and then we apply our mixture into it. What's going to happen here is that the antibodies which are already bound to an antigen are going to stay in the in in the solution and the free antibodies which are not bound to to the antigen are going to bind to this uh, antigen uh, which is attached to the bottom of the well now what we do is that we wash out, out everything and then what's left here is the antibody which is attached to the antigen uh, which is attached to the surface of the well. We apply then, uh, we then apply the enzyme coupled secondary antibody which is going to detect the primer, this primer or this antibody and then the substrate. The thing here is that the, uh, is that the, the more the signal I get out of this, it means the less the protein I have in my sample. Because when I have less protein in my sample, then more free antibody will be in my mixture, and then more signal will be coming out of this. But when I have more proteins in my sample, then much of the antibodies will be bound to the protein, and then a very few amount of antibodies will be bound to to, the, to this antigen, and then I will get less signal out of this. Um, this is This is what we call competitive ELISA. In case you hear about this. I just wanted to tell you what is competitive ELISA. Now let's move to the detection. How do I detect uh, the signal from ELISA and how do I uh, analyze uh, uh, the results? In order to detect the signal coming out of ELISA, as I told you before, um, the very important thing is the enzyme. We always have, in ELISA, we always have an enzyme because it's an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. This enzyme can be either HRP, for example, the most, these are the most two used enzymes nowadays. There is the HRP enzyme and there is the AP enzyme, the alkali, uh, alkaline phosphatase. Um, as we said before or as we saw before, 
uh, every enzyme has a specific substrate. The, the substrates we can use with HRP can be either the OPD, which gives me an amber color, the color you're seeing here. This is, um, in this plate, we used HRP uh, enzyme and OPD substrate. So this is the amber color. Uh, or TMB, which gives a blue color, or the ABTS, which gives a green color. The substrate we use with alkaline phosphatase is BNPP, which gives yellow color. Anyway, so um, as I told you, in order to detect uh, the presence or the, the quantity of the protein in my extract, I should use an enzyme with a substrate. We saw that before. Um, now, how to quantify the amount of protein or the concentration of protein in my sample? In order to do this, I should first design my plate. In order to design my plate, uh, the plate should uh, contain the, the following things. First of all, the samples. The sample should be applied in duplicate or better in triplicate. It, de it depends how many samples do I have. As an example, in this plate, they had 40 samples, so a lot of samples, and this is why they applied every sample twice. But if I have, for example, 20 samples, um, I would apply every sample three times. Triplicate is better than duplicate because then you eliminate the chance of uh, the error chance when you have triplicate of the sample. Okay. Second, which is very important, is the standard curve. The standard curve is a mixture or um, different dilution, dilutions of a certain protein. Uh, usually we use BSA or any other protein. Uh, we prepare uh, serial dilutions of this protein and then we apply it uh, in order to prepare the standard curve. So here, for example, we have different concentrations uh, of the protein, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, so on. Um, yeah, uh, the... Uh, like, uh, as I told you, the protein can be BSA or any other protein. So we add, it. also the standard curve is applied in duplicate. I can also apply it in triplicate. Uh, then I need a positive control. The positive control is, um, so the positive control is treated exactly at the other samples. The positive control is a known concentration sample. So it's a sample of a known concentration, and I treat it exactly at the other samples. It's just to ensure that the concentration I'm, 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 t I'm getting out of this positive control is, uh, is, a, is, 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 uh, is right, you know, just a positive control. And then the blank samples you see here, the blank samples contain everything but proteins. It's just to use, uh, we use it to, as a blank for the spectrophotometer. What we do then, uh, after applying all the steps of ELISA, is that we measure the absorbance coming out of every single well. And then what we do is that we draw a standard curve, uh, depending on these um, standard curves. The standard curve is absorption versus concentration. As you know, uh, here we know the concentrations of the of the uh, of the, of the standard curve. So concentration versus absorption, and then when we ha when I have the standard curve, I can use the absorption of every sample here in order to uh, measure the concentration uh, of the protein in the sample. Uh, of course, if I have a very concentrated uh, sample, what I should do is to dilute the sample in order to uh, to fit in the standard curve. This is everything I wanted to tell you about ELISA. I hope now you know better about ELISA, you know better how does ELISA work. Um, if you find, so if you like this video, uh, don't, don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe the channel. If you have any question, don't forget to write it in the comments. If you want to mo know more, as I told you before, about unlabeled um, immunoassays, write me in the comments. 
and then uh, see you in the next video bye bye